Welcome to today's lecture on differential calculus. Uh, we had looked in the previous lecture on the notion of differentiability of a function at one, one point. And we looked at uh, some examples of uh, differentiable functions. We also looked at some tools to compute uh, differentiability of, uh, to compute uh, the dif derivative of functions, namely of the sum of functions, the difference of functions. <clears throat> we had the product rule for differentiation, the quotient rule. We also looked at what is we called as the chain rule for differentiation of functions. So, uh, and then we uh, applied these things to um, polynomial functions and also to what we called as the marginal of a, a function. Um, today we are going to look at some more uh, differentiable functions which occur in uh, economics, commerce and management subjects and of course uh, mathematically they are important uh, uh, functions themselves. Uh, we will not be able to prove all the properties of these uh, functions because we have not really defined them um, precisely. Uh, but we will state uh, these functions and state their properties. The first one is the exponential function which we have already come across. So, let us look at the exponential function. The, exo <clears throat> the exponential function with the natural base e is the function x going to x x, expectation <clears throat> uh, exponential of x, x belonging to r. This is a differentiable function and the derivative of this function is the function itself. In fact, this is the only function in mathematics which has the property that its derivative is itself and takes the value 1 uh, at the point x is equal to 0. So, the property that uh, this function um, takes the value 1 at 0 and its derivative is itself gives that this is the only function in mathematics with these two properties. Of course, that is a uh, uh, fact which needs to be proved, but will not be needing it and will not be using it. I am just stating this fact uh, because it is an interesting and important fact. So, derivative of exponential function is exponential function itself. Uh, next, we look at what is called the derivative of the inverse function. Uh, recall we defined a function to be uh, uh, bijective if it is 1 1 and on 2. So, if a function is 1 1 and on 2, then uh, it has a inverse function. Okay. So, we are going to look at the differentiability of the inverse function in terms of the differentiability of the function itself. So, the theorem says that if f is a 1 1 function which is on to also and is differentiable at a point x is equal to c with the derivative not equal to 0, this is very important. The function is differentiable at a point x is equal to c with derivative not equal to 0, then the inverse function which we normally denoted by f inverse, which is from the range to the domain, is differentiable at the point d, which is f of c. f was differentiable at the point c. So, what is the image? Image is f of c, we denoted by d. So, the inverse function is differentiable at the point d, which is f of c, and its derivative at the point d is nothing but 1 over the derivative at the point c. So, this is uh, something like saying, derivative of the inverse is 1 over the derivative of the function provided the function is uh, differentiable and the derivative is not equal to 0. This is <clears throat> what is called the derivative of the inverse function theorem and we will use it to uh, apply to the exponential function. Recall that exponential function was 1, one to 1 on to function from the real line to uh, the non-negative real numbers. So, and it is inverse uh, was denoted by ln of x and the natural logarithm uh, for the point x. And that was the inverse of the function, uh, exponential function. So, by this uh, theorem and the earlier fact that exponential is differentiable, we get that um, this logarithmic function is differentiable at the point d, which is let us call it as exponential of c uh, and the derivative ln dash the derivative of at d is 1 over the derivative of the exponential function at x equal to c and that derivating being itself. So, this is equal to exponential of c and exponential of c is d. So, it is 1 over d. So, derivative of ln of d you know, for the natural log with the base e at any point is 1 over the value of that point. 
So, this is another important fact that ln x ln of uh, d say is differentiable for every value of d bigger than 0 and its derivative is 1 over d. So, we get two more functions which are differentiable namely one was uh, the exponential function and the other is the derivative function. So, we get uh, if we denote the variable uh, by x then derivative of ln of x is equal to 1 over x for every x bigger than 0. Since the exponential function uh, recall that uh, for any positive real uh, number a of course, not equal to 1 a raise power x uh, the general exponential function with base a uh, we can write it as a raise power x is equal to exponential of x times ln of a right that is uh, obvious and because this x will go as a raise power x and exponential and ln are inverse of each other. So, ln of x uh, a raise power x can be written in this way. Now, exponential is differentiable function x is differentiable ln of a is a constant. So, this function is differentiable and its derivative by using chain rule is given by d by dx of a raise power x will be equal to exponential of x ln of a exponent derivative of exponential is exponential, but this is not exponential of the variable it is y times ln of a and its derivative with respect to x is ln of a. So, that is ln of a. So, it says the derivative of a raised to power x using chain rule and the fact that exponential is differentiable with derivative itself gives us the derivative of a raised to power x is equal to ln of a into a raised to power x. So, if the base changes from the natural to something else then the derivative it still remains a differentiable function only thing is its derivative is not a raise to power x itself it is ln of a times a raise to power x. So, another function which is differentiable. Finally, uh, let us look at the function log a the log of x to the base a where a is any positive uh, real number then this is the inverse of a raise to power x that is how we have defined them. Okay. So, for a point d is equal to a, a raise to power c the function of log to the base a x is differentiable and its derivative is equal to 1 over the derivative of the function a raise to power y at the point y equal to c and that means derivative is equal to this is ln of a. Uh, a raised to power y evaluated at y equal to c. This vertical line means we are evaluating for that particular value. So, for x is equal to d that is 1 over derivative of y and y is equal to c. So, we are evaluating at the point c for that. So, this is 1 over uh, a raised to power c y is equal to c. So, this is a raised to power c of ln of a and <coughs> a raised to power c is equal to uh, d. So, it is 1 over d ln of a. So, that gives us the formula that the derivative of ln of uh, log of uh, x to the natural base a is at the point x is equal to d is not 1 over d it is 1 over d multiplied by ln of a in the denominator. So, this gives us uh, uh, so, we have got the derivative of uh, log function to the uh, base as a general base a. We can uh, go over to what are called the power functions see for a fix let us look at x to the power a the exponential function was a to the power x base was fixed here the base is varying the power is fixed. So, let us for any a y equal to x to the power a for x bigger than 0 let us consider this power function since uh, we can take apply log on both sides. So, we get ln of y is equal to a comes out a times ln of x because x is positive. So, this is defined. So, we can now differentiate both sides with respect to x apply the chain rule here derivative of ln of y is 1 over y into the chain rule dy by dx is equal to a derivative of ln of x that is 1 over x. So, we get ln of y is equal to 1 over y dy by dx a raise power x. So, that gives us the derivative dy by dx is equal to we can take y on the other side. So, a y by x 
and we put the value of y is equal to x to the power a. So, this is x to the power a. So, derivative of x to the power a is a minus 1 x to the power a minus 1 for a, a base uh, for a power a. So, it behaves very much like uh, uh, the natural uh, numbers when a is a natural number or a is a integer, uh, it behaves very much similar to that. So, the power comes down and x to the power power minus 1. Right? So, derivative of x to the power a is equal to uh, a into x to the power a minus 1, the power goes less by 1. So, we have uh, got lot of examples of differentiable functions and here is uh, one application of uh, differentiability, which is uh, very useful uh, in the theory of approximations and uh, it is nice, because for any uh, function if it is differentiable, it gives a way of approximating the value of the function at points nearby, that point where it is differentiable. So, to understand these approximations, let us look at a function f, which is differentiable at x naught. So, what does that mean? That means, f dash of x naught, which is the limit h going to 0, the increment in uh, y. So, that is f of x plus h minus f of x naught divided by h exists and that limit we call as f dash of x naught. So, that is a derivative. So, this is a definition of the derivative of the function at the point x naught, because we have assumed it is differentiable. That means, this limit exists and is equal to um, a number, which we have denoted by f dash of x naught. Let us look at the picture. Uh, in the picture, what is happening? This uh, blue line, blue curve is the graph of the function f of x. At a point x naught, this is a point x naught, this green line is a tangent line at this point, this is the tangent line. So, this is the tangent line at the point x naught, the green. Let us take a point nearby x naught plus h. So, this is the point x naught plus h. If I draw this vertical line, it will cut the tangent at some point p and meet the graph of the function at the point c. So, what is the uh, point c? c is at x is equal to x naught plus h and the corresponding y is f of x naught plus h. So, this is this height from this bottom to the top of c is nothing but x <coughs> is the point is the value which is uh, y naught f of x naught plus h. So, uh, uh, probably uh, in the picture this point is not uh, there. So, let us call this as uh, uh, the point p. So, we will call this point as uh, p. Oh, so, this p is already there, sorry. Okay. So, uh, in this picture now, let us uh, analyze what is p b divided by b a. So, this is p b and this is divided by b a. So, what is b a? The length b a is nothing but the whole length is x naught plus h, this point is x naught. So, this length is equal to h. So, a b or b a is equal to h and p b, this p b, okay. we do not know what is this height at p, but we surely know that this is equal to, if I take uh, b c from b to c minus p to c. So, this uh, p to b, I can write as b to c minus p to c. So, that is a numerator here. right? Now, we know that b of c, right? the height b of c is nothing but the full height that is f of x naught plus h minus the height uh, up to the point b that is f of x naught. So, the height b c is nothing but f of x naught minus f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught and the denominator a b is h. So, this is, so this ratio p b by b a is equal to uh, f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught divided by h minus, so this is b c by b a is this value and p c divided by h that is the second term. So, let us uh, uh, analyze this a bit slightly further. So, uh, the, from the picture it should be quite clear that as h goes to 0, that means as this point x naught plus h comes closer and closer, this height p c is going to become smaller and smaller, this is going to become smaller and smaller and that is going to become equal to 0. So, uh, as h goes to 0, 
this quantity is uh, going to go to 0. Not only uh, P c goes to 0, P c divided by h also uh, goes to 0. So, let us uh, put this value, uh, this in our next uh, observation that because the slope, so we got P a by v. So, that means that from here, let us look at this last equation. So, last equation says f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught divided by h is equal to multiply by h. So, that is equal to h times f dash x naught minus p of c. Right? So, in this last part, we have multiplied by, uh, by h and solved it for f of x naught. So, f of x naught is equal to h goes there, cancels it f of x naught plus p c. Now, as h goes to 0, this quantity goes to 0 and this quantity goes to 0. So, obviously, f of x naught plus h goes to f of x naught. So, p c goes to 0, the point is p c goes to 0 as h goes to 0. So, let us look at the back. As h goes to 0, this height p c is becoming smaller and smaller. So, that is going to go to 0. So, what this uh, implies for us is the following that I can write f of x naught plus h is approximately same as f of x naught when h is small. So, this is the you can think of this is the error we are going to make. right? So, let us write this observation that for h small f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught is almost same as h times f dash of x naught that p c uh, that is very small. So, we can uh, sort of say it is approximately equal to. So, this gives us an approximation or equivalently we can write this as f of x naught is equal to f of x naught plus h times f dash of x naught. So, this is a, a very good uh, approximation uh, for the for value of the function at a point nearby. So, what we are saying is if f is differentiable at a point x naught then its value at a nearby point can be approximately calculated by looking at the value at the point x naught plus h times the derivative of the function at that point. So, we need to know what is the derivative of the function uh, at that point x naught and if we are going uh, far from x naught by a distance h then it is h times. So, that is the uh, error and that is approximately the change that will be approximate change coming in the value of x naught f of x naught when you move x naught to x. So, this is an approximation for uh, the nearby point in terms of how far away you are going and the value of the derivative. And look at the right hand side, the right hand side is nothing but the uh, equation of the tangent line at the point x naught at a point h 0. So, this is uh, the equation of the tangent line. So, one says we have got what is called a tangent line approximation or the linear approximation to f at the point x naught plus h. Let us just go back and look at the picture. What we are saying to make it more clear is the following that at this point we know the value of the function is f of x naught. We are trying to find what could be an approximate value of the function at this point. So, we are trying to find out what is this height f of x naught plus c we are saying this is almost same as the value at the point p. This is same as the value at the point p approximately the what is the difference? The difference is this height which uh, if we are close the difference is small. So, the error becomes smaller and smaller as we approach the point. right? So, instead of uh, instead of taking the value of the function on this graph, so that is this value we can take its value on a linear graph that is a tangent line that is a linear. So, that is why this is called the linear approximation uh, at the point x naught. So, for a differentiable function we get a linear approximation to the value f of x naught plus h and that linear approximation is nothing but f of x naught plus h times f dash of x naught. See the advantage of uh, this approximation is this that f could be a very complicated function. Right? It could be a very complicated function, but if we know it is differentiable and if we know its derivative at a point, then we can find the value at a nearby point approximately from this simple formula. 
and uh, many, many a times uh, these approximations are very useful uh, when the functions are complicated. Um, in, one, uh, in, in some of the calculators, uh, this is the kind of values which are, this is the kind of uh, formula which is used to find the values uh, of um, functions at points when exactness is not available. So, get an approximation values. Right. So, this is a linear. Uh, another way of representing the same thing is the following that f of x naught plus h minus f of x divided by h is almost same as f of x naught. So, that is going back to the definition of uh, the derivative. So, derivative is the slope of the tangent and this side is the slope of the secant. So, for h small, the uh, slope of the secant is approximately same as the secant of uh, slope of the tangent. So, that is another way of saying. But it has a great implication for us if h is equal to 1, in this if we put h is equal to 1, that says f of x naught plus h is approximately equal to uh, f uh, um, is approximately uh, approximately given by f dash of x. So, we h is 1, so multiply by h. So, this change see f of x naught plus h minus f of x will be equal to h times f of f dash of x naught. That means, the change in the values of y is approximately equal to the uh, approximately equal to the derivative at that point for h is equal to 1. So, when there is a change a unit change in input. So, we for the interpretation in our subject uh, we will uh, we can say that if f is denotes the um, output and x is the input then the change in output for a unit input is approximately same as equal to the derivative. So, that is the uh, uh, conclusion we get for our uh, subject. So, for a function if it is differentiable then the and what was the change in the, the value of the function for a uh, unit change that was called as the marginal. So, why now we are related to the concept of marginal. So, for a function y equal to f of x if f is differentiable then the marginal of f at x is nothing but f dash of x. So, in, in economics the marginal uh, um, marginal is for a fun differentiable function is also defined by the derivative. So, derivative gives the notion of marginal of a function. Let us look at uh, an example uh, for this uh, interpretation. Consider the consumption C, uh, something is being consumed. So, is a con uh, consumption function is a function of the income y. So, C is a function, function of the income y called the consumption function. Um, you should not get uh, uh, get a feeling that why I am using y here. See, uh, you can use any uh, um, symbol here, y should not be always treated as a dependent variable and x as independent variable. In mathematics, we have the freedom of denoting anything by uh, anything. Okay. So, uh, here what we are saying is the consumption is a function of uh, uh, the income and the income is denoted by y, I am not denoting it by x. So, just for a change so that you get an idea of that variable could be any symbol. So, consumption function is f of y, y is the income. So, the rate of change of consumption, okay, the rate of change of the consumption is called the marginal of the consumption. So, and the marginal uh, or the marginal propensity to consume and will be given by marginal <coughs> marginal of the consumption MPC marginal pro propensity of consumption of income y is derivative of the consumption function with respect to y. So, that is what it gives to rise to. So, using the approximation given by the, our formula, the marginal propensity of consumption of y is same as delta c by uh, delta y. So, that is approximately right. We said uh, is derivative is approximately equal to the slope of the secant. So, that is delta c by uh, delta y. So, this is this is interpreted as follows that the marginal propensity to consume 
is approximately the marginal propensity to consume is approximately the change in consumption due to unit. So, if, if this income is 1, if delta y is 1, if their income is 1, then the marginal propensity um, of consumption at that point is equal to delta of c. So, that is equal to the change uh, in the consumption. So, it is a very uh, interesting implication in uh, um, economics or commerce. It says that the marginal propensity to consume is approximately equal to delta c, which is a change in consumption if delta y is 1, if there is a unit increase in income. Right. So, uh, this is uh, an, uh, so now uh, let us suppose that the income is uh, used up, the whatever is one is consuming, that is y is the consumption plus there is a savings. So, uh, the income is some part is consumed that is consumption and S y is the savings part. So, y is equal to the differentiable assuming everything is differentiable S is also differentiable we get 1 is equal to derivative of C plus derivative of S. Derivative of C is marginal propensity to of consumption that is M P of C and uh, this derivative we call as marginal propensity of savings M P S. So, um, M P S is defined as del, uh, derivative of the savings um, with respect to the income so, that is marginal propensity to consume. So, that says that the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to save always remains a constant that is equal to 1. Right? So, the, the sum of these two is equal to constant and this has implications. So, uh, it says a total margin total of marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity to save is a constant and that is equal to 1. So, let us apply it to one example uh, say C is equal to uh, right. So, uh, the, uh, the consumption function is a quadratic in y. So, 0 0.005 y square plus 3 y dot uh, decimal 3 y plus 20. So, marginal propensity to consume is d c by d y and that gives you 2 times this quantity in y plus dot uh, 0.3. So, um, at y equal to 10 if you compute this quantity that comes out to be 0.4. So, uh, from that uh, upper thing that 1 is equal to uh, marginal propensity to consume plus marginal propensity to save we get uh, that marginal propensity to save is 1 minus 0 0.4 and that is 0 0.6. That means what for this consumption function the marginal propensity to uh, save is more than marginal propensity to consume right if this is the consumption function. So, that is the so at y equal to 10 there is a greater <coughs> propensity to save than to consume. So, that is how we uh, apply the notion of derivative and uh, to the concept of uh, uh, marginals of uh, a function. So, what we said is because the derivative is approximately equal to the rate of change of f of. So, it is approximately equal to f of x naught plus h minus f of x divided by h is approximately equal to the derivative at the point uh, f dash. That means, if h is equal to 1 that gives you that f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught is approximately uh, equal to the derivative at that point. So, using that uh, and uh, differentiability we got that uh, in, in, um, in our scenario of economics commerce and management that the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to save is a constant and we gave an implication of that. So, we will continue with the study of uh, derivative and its applications in the next lecture. Thank you.